All right, I um, I've waited quite a while. I, I issued a little um, a challenge of sorts, not uh, um, you know, not one of the fun kind of goofy kind of challenges, but one that was um, I don't know, I thought might be interesting and would challenge people who um, who use the Bible to make videos or challenge people. Um, on certain issues, and I was, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm surprised, but I'm disappointed. Two people have responded that I know of, and I, I guess I would know if there were more, um, but Shadig especially, I just, um, wow, talk about, you know, disappointed. You're, you're the one who kind of inspired it with your, you know, oh, look at this, and, uh, I have found a place in scripture that shows that, you know, whatever, I don't know what you thought you were showing, but, um, but you didn't, uh, you haven't responded. But to the two people that have responded, as I get ready to, to share mine, I feel a little little funny in that, you know, I don't know that I'm right. I, I just know, you know, that many years ago I wrestled with that little passage of Scripture. It seems so strange. Answer a fool according to his folly. Do not answer a fool according to his folly. Um, but I think you guys both got very similar, uh, you know, understandings um, as I did. Mine, I, I, I mean, I, in my mind, uh, when I won't go to find the example, it's a little more uh, specific in the way I apply it. Um, in that, all of us said it, it seems it seems clear that in one case they're saying don't respond in the same manner um, as a fool might be behaving, right? So I think uh, somebody mentioned you know if he's being angry or personal or, you know, uh, I don't know what you said, you know, silly or ad hom or w whatever it is, you don't answer in that same like manner, but typically you you do answer, but hopefully in a way that makes your point. Another guy said you don't even necessarily answer on the same subject, um, and that's a part of what I see. When I go to the example, you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, I, because the scripture says, do not answer a fool and answer a fool, I assume a question is involved from a fool. Um, that's usually what you're answering is a question, but I understand it could be an answer in the, in the form of an argument with a fool. You're answering each other back and forth. But I looked at looked at it as a question, and then I, I as I thought about it, and um, I went back to the old saying, um, you know, there's no such thing as a stupid question. And, I, and that's, you know, in the setting of learning, that's true. That's true. There's no such thing as a stupid question. And that's when it hit me. It has to do with a question that is being used for a different purpose than questions are intended to be used for. It's not an attempt to get an answer or gain knowledge or gain information or clarity or any of those things. A fool uses a question to try to trap somebody in some way. Or he thinks in his own mind that with this question I prove, uh, because of people's inability to answer me or whatever, uh, I prove a point about the person, about the subject, about myself. I prove that I'm smart, that I have found a question someone can't answer. I use a question to prove that. That's the, the setup of a fool. That's a question in the hands of a fool. And then the issue becomes, how do you answer that? When a guy asks a question, and he set it up in his mind, and maybe he's done a good job of it, to where no matter how you answer, hey, have you stopped beating your wife? Yes. Well, no. I mean, yes. I mean, no. Foolish question. You don't answer the question. Yet you answer with a question, in the, in the example I'm going to show, but you answer in a way that shows that you see through the fool's misuse or abuse of questions. Um, I go to Mark, uh, oh, I think it's 12, let me click on this and see, um, it's Mark 12 and it's verse 13, and, and read the whole thing because this whole verse is, is like, or the whole chapter is examples of people trying to do this kind of thing to Jesus. I'll read it real quick, and then i got to check my time. Uh, later they sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to Jesus to catch him in his words. 
They came to him and said, and this is cool, they start off with a little suck up, right? Teacher, we know you are a man of integrity. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are, but you teach the way of God in accordance to the truth. And then they ask a question, doesn't this sound like the kind of video that Shadegg did? Oh, you Christians, well, I know we know that you guys are honest and you, the word of God is perfect and you guys have it all figured out. So I have a question for you. And then they say to Jesus, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay or shouldn't we? Now, sidebar, this guy is not interested in tax law, is he? He's not even interested, nothing to do with taxes. He's not even interested in Jesus' opinion or answer to the question. He wants Jesus to say something that would indicate either that he's against, doesn't think it's right to pay taxes, which would make him, uh, uh, what's it called, a malcontent, rabble rouser, a revolutionary, uh, put him in, in rebellion against Caesar. End of ministry. Or say something indicating that actually, you know, taxes, you know, Caesar's correct and we're under his rule, we need to pay the taxes, and then he loses the support of people that, I, I don't think Jesus even cares he has their support, but he loses the support of people that are looking for some kind of a leader in a revolution. So what does Jesus do instead of discussing taxes with the guy? He goes, oh, it says, but Jesus knew their hypocrisy. That, that, that's what Shadig is doing in his video during women. He's acting, hypocrisy, not a, not a, in, in its truest sense. He's acting as if he gives a crap about the Bible or that he understands the Bible um, and and he has a question, you know, for whatever reason. Um, but Jesus says this, Why are you trying to trap me? He asked. Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. So they brought the coin and he asked them, Whose portrait is this? And whose inscription? Well, Caesar's, they replied. And then he says to them, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. And they were amazed at him. There's an example, I think, where he people were waiting to see him get trapped, and not only did he not get trapped, but he gave an answer that I don't know. When you think about it, it says something to the effect of, "You talk about things God's not concerned about, and that means that I'm not concerned about. I don't care about money, uh, taxes, and the world. Well, I'm here to do something completely different, and you're an idiot if you think we're going to sabotage all my work with that stupid, stupid question." Now, the thing that's interesting to me about this is, what tone do you read this in? See, in Shadig's thing, you got two responses that were interesting to me. One came from Jack. It was like the epitome of a parody. He, he used uh, you know, almost every sentence that Shadig used. He used his arrogant tone, he condescending, patronizing crap. He just throws it all back to, to Shadig, but in the form of you know somebody questioning, uh, was it evolution? I don't know, but it was a parody. Revealing, you know, saying to Shadig, clearly, I see what a dork you are. Um, but then Storm Trek, I think it's the name, answers with this totally serious, thoughtful, you know, softly spoken uh, explanation to the to the actual question that Shadig asked. Even though Shadig has no interest in the answer to the question, and yet when I saw that that. Uh, more serious, thought-out answer. I thought, man, that's a good answer too. And that's the, that's the you know what would Jesus do kind of answer, isn't it? But when I read this passage, you could go either way. Jesus could be just really laying into this guy. You know, bring oh you dork, somebody bring me a coin. Don't move, idiot. Wait right there. Bring me a coin. Whose picture is that? You know what I mean? And um, why are you trying to trap me? Bring me a coin. Look at this. Uh, whose portrait is this? And who's, well, then what do I care? Then you give that to Caesar. But what about, what, what's God's? Do you have a clue? You know what I mean? He could have been ripping the guy a new butthole, or he could have been like storm trap. Why are you trying to trap me? Someone bring me a coin. He goes, now look, whose picture is this? Whose inscription? Well, uh, you know, the thing is, if you read enough of the uh, examples in that chapter, an important line comes out and it says, they were amazed, and after this, they didn't ask him any more questions. And um, I'll leave it to everybody else. You know, I look at those two types of answers, and I wonder what kind of answer a uh, video like Shad Eggs deserves. I think uh, if anyone could do it, they would need to answer in a way that would shut his stupid ass up.